Nothing says April Fool's Day like an exaggerated postcard. I am pleased to introduce our speaker today, Jason Combs from Kearney, Nebraska. Jason has published uh, extensively about Nebraska and Kansas photographers and their exaggerated postcards. We ask if he would be willing to share some of his discoveries with the club members here today. So take it away, Jason. All right, well, thank you. Hey, very good. Thank you again very much. Uh, I do appreciate the opportunity to, to speak today. Um, I, so I appreciate the uh, invitation. And I would just share, you know, previously we talked a little bit about how did I get into postcards? And it's probably just a great question for all of us to answer. Uh, how did we stumble into postcards? And I shared that uh, years ago, I'm, I'm probably 20, 25 years ago, I was at a sale in Maryville, Missouri. And uh, there were two or three postcard albums of real photo postcards from small towns all over the Northwest part of the state. And uh, I did not buy them. And that's probably in the uh, antique or collector world. Uh, we often think about the things that we did not buy. So I'm still thinking about those postcards that I let go 25 years ago. But I just think that's interesting that for years I've thought about those postcards. And then five, six years ago now, I was working in uh, Phelps County, Nebraska. And Phelps County, is widely known as the Swedish capital of the Great Plains. At least that's what they claim anyway. And um, I was working in a house in Funk, Nebraska, small town, couple hundred people. And I found a couple different postcard albums from T.A. Carlson. Carlson was a photographer in Holdridge, Nebraska in Phelps County. And these cards were from Phelps County and they had been sent back to Sweden and then over the course of maybe 10 or 15 years, they came back to Phelps County, Nebraska. As family members and friends continue to migrate to South Central Nebraska, they brought all these cards back with them. So for almost 25 years now, I've been a professor of geography. So I was just really fascinated with kind of the, uh, the spatial migration aspect of that story. And I was really captured by the images. And kind of at the same time, I stumbled across some of these exaggeration postcards. I'd never even heard of them before, but I just thought they were so interesting uh, of what many of the publishers across the Great Plains were doing, photographers, postcard publishers. And Conard was one of those individuals who I came across. So last year in 2022, I was able to publish this article on Conard. The title is Dust Storms, Jackrabbits, and Grasshoppers. Oh my, Frank Pop Conard and his exaggerated. Uh, creations. Conard himself was a fixture. He's from Garden City, Kansas, and uh, he was there for decades. So in addition to being a photographer and postcard publisher, for a period of time, he was uh, involved with KIUL, the uh, radio station in Garden City, and we'll see some cards that reflect that. Uh, it looks like he started making postcards in the 1920s and then gets into exaggeration cards in the 1930s. And really with many of these publishers, and Conard is a, a great example, his intimate knowledge of Western Kansas, kind of the Western section of the Great Plains, he was able to take uh, jackrabbits and grasshoppers, things that he was very familiar with, and create these exaggerated images and really market them to people across the United States. And, and so I just think that's interesting part of his story. He took what was local and was able to sell these really across the country. So uh, Conard begins early in life in Colorado. He comes to Garden City, Kansas in 1914. Uh, soon when he got there, Mabel was his wife. They purchased an existing photo studio. Uh, the studio had been in business since the 1880s. So Conard steps in and buys this uh, photography studio so portraits, very typical. The uh, left-hand side here, here's a photograph of a nun. I don't know who this is, but Conard obviously did this. Conard Studio, Garden City, Kansas. Uh, on the right-hand side, this is um, uh, the Lost River Ranch Clubhouse. And you can see Conard, Garden City, Kansas. Very typical early uh, um, real photo postcards. And many of these publishers 
they focused on churches, on schools, on main streets. Again, this idea of selling place. So he captured many of the prominent buildings and, and, and areas in these small towns and counties. So he was very gifted in that respect. Uh, over the course of his career, it looks like he literally made millions and millions of postcards. Um, a lot of different images, but again, he starts with real photo postcards. The one on the left-hand side, this is the tower in Colorado, the high point between Kansas City and Denver. And uh, then on the right-hand side, again, this idea of selling uh, place, the promotion of place. Here's the uh, swimming pool in Garden City, Kansas, uh, known as the largest concrete swimming pool in the United States. Uh, I don't know if, if that's true or not, but that's uh, his claim anyway. So initially, again, he's making these real photo postcards. As I got into Conard, I came across a number of uh, Dust Bowl cards. So again, uh, kind of my academic nerd world, my interest in the Dust Bowl, and I think that's my connection to Conard. I had worked on a Dust Bowl project. And then I stumble into Conard, and he presents, you know, these visual images of the Dust Bowl. And I was really just captivated by them. The one on the left, uh, result of the dust storm in the Middle West, and the one on the right, uh, approaching dust storm in the Middle West. And that was one of the initial cards I was able to purchase from Conard. And maybe from a uh, visual arts perspective, a graphic design perspective, you might look at some of these Dust Bowl cards, and initially, as, as I did anyway, I looked at them and thought, gosh, that's a terrible image. I mean, it's just a giant blob of dust. But then when you take a step back and understand how devastating the Dust Bowl was, the catastrophe of the 1930s, especially for Western Kansas, I mean, Garden City, he was close by, arguably one of the worst places to be in the Great Plains. And so he was able to capture these images and share them with people across the country uh, to visually present the devastation. Here's a couple more Dust Bowl cards. The one on the uh, left-hand side resolved of the dust storm in the Middle West with a tractor buried, essentially. Then one of my favorite Connor cards I have is uh, titled Old Man Dirt to the Middle West. Again, when you first look at that, it's not very attractive. And you might think, gosh, you know, what can I learn from this? What can I capture from this image? And then when you flip this card over on the, the left-hand side, I just typed out what it says on the back. Uh, so this one was uh, postmarked, Wilson, Kansas, to First View, Colorado. It was uh, sent to the postal system in December of 1939. And the back side of the card reads this, we drove through about 200 miles of dirt, just like you see on the other side, and arrived here at Wilson OK. I'm staying all night here. Again, so the image itself, it just, and then you read the backside and it's like, wow. I mean, just, it gives me anyway, a good idea of what people went through, the devastation, the catastrophe, the Dust Bowl. I just really like that card. So again, that's one of Connor's creations. So again, in the 1930s, he gets into grasshoppers, into giant jackrabbits, these exaggeration postcards. Uh, on the left-hand side, that's one of his um, selling points or pitches, if you will. He has um, this poster made, essentially, and sends these out <laughs> so folks could purchase, and he has the cards numbered. You can see order by number, and uh, the right-hand side, that's one of his uh, jackrabbit cards, uh, and I like the captions. You just don't stick these bunnies in your hunting coat pocket. So again, when you understand the, the devastation of the jackrabbit plagues. In Western Kansas at the time, they actually had jackrabbit drives. Entire communities would get together and they would fence off huge sections of property and try and drive the jackrabbits together uh, and to dispose of them. Uh, it, they literally were a plague at this time. And so Connor takes something that was a devastation and makes these exaggerated images from them. Here's a couple more. Uh, heavy artillery needed. Shotguns just burn them on the uh, left hand side, the right hand side, earing them down. Again, for a uh, Western Kansas, kind of this cowboy connection. So a lot of folks would uh, relate to that in Western Kansas. A few more jackrabbit cards. Um, the one on the, the left hand side, 
uh, off for the fair. And the right-hand side, don't be a road hog, stay on the right side of the road. Uh, one of his uh, safety first series, the Jackrabbits. So however popular the Jackrabbits might have been, uh, grasshoppers were really kind of the, the money pitch, if you will, for Conard. That's probably what he's most well known for. Uh, he referred to these as hopper whoppers. And one of the cards actually has that in the caption. We'll see that in just a moment. But uh, his hopper whoppers really took off like nothing else he'd ever done before. Uh, and again, he sold millions of these cards, maybe for just a few pennies a piece. But through the 1930s, it really arguably salvaged his business. And again, he was able to capture this idea. Settlers through the Great Plains in the 1870s, 1880s, through the 1930s, obviously, had dealt with grasshopper plagues. Many of the uh, early historical accounts um, have the sky turning dark during the day. This would happen in Nebraska, in Kansas, in Oklahoma, these plagues of grasshoppers. And many historical accounts talk about that they uh, literally blackened the sky, and when they came down, they would eat everything in sight. So any veg vegetation, the corn crop, that was gone. Gardens, I mean, they ate carrots down into the ground. Uh, and then once they were done with vegetation, uh, they ate curtains out of the house. I mean, clothes on the line, they ate those too. De this, they devoured everything in sight. So again, it was utter devastation. And, and Connor was able to take that and, and make postcards from them. Uh, he shared in a couple different newspaper articles I came across that initially, the, uh, when these grasshopper plagues in the 1930s hit, uh, they were so devastating in Garden City, Kansas, that uh, he couldn't even fill uh, his gas tank to his car. So they just covered everything. And uh, he shared that he went home that night and didn't sleep. All he could think about was grasshoppers. And soon enough, he gets into uh, capturing these grasshopper images and then montaged, photoshopped, if you will, these exaggeration cards out of them. So again, he takes uh, devastation, makes these cards from them. So here's a Ridem cowboy down on the farm is on the right hand side. And throughout all these, understand again that he's presenting grasshoppers not as being devastating now that they had been conquered, so to speak. So they had uh, trained them to, uh, to ride like on horseback, for example. So fresh air Pullman on the left hand side a new farm hand on the right hand side. And I just like my dad was a tractor collector, so I have to like that card. Here's a, a couple that Howe sent, um, kind of World War II related by Bonds on the left hand side, Axis Partners Beware. And then on the right hand side, Flying to Victory will soon be over Tokyo. Again, this cross collectability of cards. So a military collector would be interested in these as well as a postcard collector. Here's uh, the inspector on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, this is one of my favorites. So a hopper tells a whopper. So again, he referred to these as his hopper whopper cards. And I like that card because you see a connection to his uh, radio uh, in the KIUL in Garden City, Kansas. Again, he owned that or was co-owner for a period of time. And it looks like in his photography studio, he actually uh, also sold radio equipment. So he had a, a, a real connection to the radio world as well. So he was able to combine that all into this uh, Hopper Tells a Whopper via radio. Here's a few more train hold up on the left-hand side. Uh, the old gray mare, she ain't what she used to be on the right-hand side. And then here's uh, my last slide for you. Uh, so bossy on the uh, right-hand side on the top and uh, at the bottom uh, of economy, so to speak, grasshopper maids. So again, the grasshopper plagues, Connor presents them as uh, being conquered, of tending to children, of doing farm work. And then on the left-hand side, that's a, a, an image of Connor himself. Uh, the folks in uh, Finney County, which is Garden City, Kansas, were extremely helpful to this project. Uh, I tapped into several different postcard collectors uh, who I have gotten to know fairly well in Kansas and Nebraska, and I was able to copy many of their cards or get scans of them. 
and uh, eBay proved essential as well. I found a lot of cards on eBay. There's a, a lot of Connard cards on eBay still today. Uh, the folks in Garden City were spectacular. Uh, they really um, pushed this over the goal line, so to speak, in terms of research. Uh, I was in Garden City for a couple days. The public library and also the county, Finney County Historical Society, uh, they have just a huge collection of Connard images, of postcards, of newspaper articles. And really, without their help, I couldn't have written that article. So I uh, just wanted to point that out. But uh, I'd be happy to try and answer any questions if you have any. So feel free. Well, I guess I'll start. This is Dennis McBurney. Uh, Finney County, one of the places we worked with on the Connard postcard checklist, did they share that with you when you were out there? Um, I have one of those checklists now. Uh, I don't... I don't recall them sharing it with me when I was there. Okay. Yeah. So, Morgan Williams, I think is also on here. So yeah, he yep. and Patrick Clements and I worked together to put together like a four page biography of, of uh, Pop Connard and, and Mabel. So hopefully that was of some help if you were able to use that. Yep. 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 No, I have a copy of that that I was there for a couple of days and I just, I really, I'm, my whole family farms, I'm from a small town. So I just kind of appreciate small town life and Garden City is not a small town to me anyway. But uh, the first day I got there and they had known, you know, weeks in advance that I was coming and doing research about Connard. And I got to the, uh, the uh, museum, if you will, that day, the library and they had a medical emergency. So the gal who was kind of overseeing the archive room uh, just kind of showed me where all the Connard stuff is and just told me to put stuff back. So <laughs> that worked out well. All right. Very good. Thanks. Okay. Ashley Allen uh, has, or Aaron's has, has asked, um, he numbered these cards. This is very unusual, is it not? And, and do you, do you have a checklist by the numbers or how have you worked that? Yeah, that's just what they were just the previous person mentioned there is a Connor checklist. Um, I have one here in my office at home. I don't know how offhand, I don't know how many cards he made, um, but there is a checklist. And, and there are gaps in the numbers. We weren't able to complete the entire series. Uh, basically the dust cards go one to 20 something or other. And then there's a 525 also. And then the exaggerations postcards go in they go up nearly to 100 but not quite uh, some of the things that you showed that were c c-1 to c-20 were printed uh, versions of his original real photo postcards so you know pay printed prices for those if you run across them in the dealers and not mm -hmm. real photo postcard prices uh, he also did some jackrabbit drives um, that you had mentioned in your talk. I, I have some images in that checklist, but I've never personally seen any with Connard's name on them for sale. So didn't mm -hmm. think they were rare at the time we put the checklist together, but uh, even years later, I haven't seen any. Hmm. Do you know what the technique uh, was for, for putting the uh, grasshoppers into the, uh, into the image? I mean, what, did he think he cut, cut and paste or did he have some sort of um, photographic skill to, to, to bring the two images together. I, my understanding is that he literally took pictures of the grasshoppers or jackrabbits and then cut them out carefully uh, and kind of pasted them together. Uh, others might have a, a better understanding than I would, I guess, but uh, that's, to my understanding, that's how he manipulated these views. But uh, again, others might have a better insight than I would. All right, Ken has, has said, uh, I, sold a grand, I sold to a grandson of his a few years ago. Uh, are you aware of him as a collector? I don't know, Ken, do you know who the guy was? No, I just remember that he was a, he was a young man. He, he was in Austin maybe almost 20 years ago. And he said that was his grandfather and he was looking for their, those cards. I sold him a few. And ever since then, I've wondered if he was still around or still collecting. I thought maybe you had run into him, that's all. Hmm. No, I never have. Okay. Yeah, and as far as I know, he Frank only Frank and Mabel only had one child, and then um, 
they only, t I think that he only had a daughter and a son. So it could have been Don Connard out of California who passed away a couple of years ago. Um, he was a very interesting guy in his own right. But so it's a very thin line. So there's only maybe two people that it could have been. This is Patrick Clement, one of our club members. You know, this is kind of a an exaggeration symposium here all of a sudden with Patrick Clement and Morgan Williams and Dennis McBurney and uh, uh, Phil McDaniels. I mean, uh, we, we've got them all here right today. Thank you for being here. Shav Levine, I just haven't looked at it yet. Uh, Shav, Shav says, very similar to, to David, um, where'd it go? Very similar to Dad Martin cars uh, that Morgan Williams showed us a while ago. I, I don't know whether you'd be competitive or not, but but are they of the same era? Different time period. Yeah, different time period. And we, or I wrote about that in the article. I never could find a, a direct connection to Connor to any of these other publishers. Uh, but one would have to think that he would have had um, knowledge of what they had done earlier because they were ex so Williams or Dad Martin, for example, was early 1900s into the teens, uh, as were many of these other exaggeration publishers at that time. Archer King's another good example from Nebraska. Uh, so Conard was in the 1930s, so he was about 20 years later. But gosh, you'd have to think that he would know of some of those earlier publishers and how successful those card sales had been. But uh, I could never find a direct link to those earlier publishers. I'd just like to say that Patrick uh, Clement there is uh, <clears throat> what I think is the largest collector of Connard historical material there is. Uh, he spent weeks and weeks and weeks and tracked down relatives and uh, just amazing. And so I, I can't see, think that anybody has a larger collection of Connard historical materials far beyond the postcards than what Patrick does. And, Patrick, where are you now? You used to be in Greensburg, Kansas. Mor Thank you, Morgan. That's so flattering. I mean, Morgan and Dennis were way ahead of Connor before I was by tens of years, maybe 20 years. So Morgan got to meet like, uh, Morgan, you got to meet like um, his employee, the young lady that like worked at his desk. So Morgan was on this before anybody that I know of. Um, so, But thank you for that, Morgan. I'm in Wichita now. So I was in Greensburg, but I live uh, I live in downtown Wichita. Well, Patrick's got pictures of the family, all everything you'd ever want. Uh, just amazing. And uh, I would like to say Dennis Burney and I, the uh, checklist we put together is for sale. We got it done last year after 10 or 15 years of working on it. And if you get a hold of Patrick or I, uh, and it does, all, many of his cars, of Garden City were not numbered, but in 35, when he started, uh, he numbered them uh, for jackrabbits and dust storms. And there are some missing numbers, which we always are looking for, but have never found. And we're glad Jason picked this up. Uh, I got acquainted with Jason last year. and uh, Just great to have another uh, collector and somebody who takes time and has the time to write articles and books about these things. We were going to do that a long year, time ago with Patrick. He was going to do a book on Connor, but we never did get that done. So, Jason, thanks for your interest, and we're always uh, glad to have somebody like you uh, involved. Okay. Jason, could you show the, uh, the Connor uh, advertising card again? Yeah. That mobile image one? Yeah, and Jason, while you pull that up, I wanted to just add a little color, which I think Morgan and Dennis and I have talked extensively. So when they were revised, when they were um, renovating this, um, uh, this, their studio on Main Street, which is a hair salon now, they were, they recovered, I think, five boxes of paperwork, which went to the Historical Society, and, and some ended up with me and some ended up with the Historical Society. He actually had sales, a force of salespeople out in the fields wow. with those cards, um, stopping at every roadside shop and every every gas station. So I, I have one end of some correspondence from the salespeople to the studio that are really, really fascinating. Wow. What a beauty. 
That's just beautiful. And actually, uh, Morgan has a really nice grouping of these. Uh, there's a variety. I think there's how many are there, Morgan? Five or six of these in different styles. Uh, this novelty postcard. There's at least uh, four different ones of those. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, yeah, there's a dust storm one that I think you and I both have. Yeah, they're they're very difficult to find. Okay, Wynn and Barber. Um, I'm not sure what you're referring to, but there's she's that you say a, there's a, a 2015 story that suggests how the exaggeration postcards may have been made. Can you explain on that? So it's a fellow named Joe Nickel, N-I-C-K-E-L-L, -L, and uh, it was a, something that apparently was on a National Geographic TV show. And this guy was asked, it says, for his opinion on how uh, an exaggeration postcard might have been made. So I guess he has a photographic background, but it's uh, like he goes into the detail of what he sees in the card and uh, how he proposes somebody might have taken like an image of in this story, it's a giant fish on a on a wagon and then made that into an exaggeration of a very large fish and a small person. You just kind of have to read it to get the gist of what he's suggesting about. Well, your your link says monster catfish investigating a whopper. <laughs> yeah, which is uh, the, the postcard that he chooses to, to um, investigate is a whopper fish on a cart, as I say. I mean, do you want me to read it to you? It's kind of, it's not that long, but so I, halfway down it says, looking at the image, it's quite typical of the postcard genre known as, known as exaggerations, uh, a form of American folk expression. He's collected these. Examples include men being attacked by monster jackrabbits, uh, huge grapes in a wheelbarrow, huge cabbages or oranges, um, a, tr a flat car on a train filled with giant potatoes, da 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 da. Uh, fish are most common. So it says, such photographs are typically made by photomontage techniques. The term montage, French for mounting, loosely describes any means of making one picture from two or more, as by background projection, collage, cut montage, uh, sandwiching of negatives and other techniques. Uh, so the postcard he's describing, the figure of the man on the wagon staring at a giant catfish does look a little different than other el elements of the photo. It's a bit out of focus. And that could suggest the photo montaging. And I guess uh, he must have done a modern reproduction. I guess on the TV show Monster Fish, there was a photograph of actually generally an unretouched. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a giant catfish. Uh, somebody that was interviewed said, my daddy had a little wagon, looked like a dog wagon. He put a big, he put a fish on it. Uh, the fish weighed about 85 pounds. And then his uncle, who was good at photography, cut out a cardboard man that was being used in a clothing advertisement, stuck it on a wagon along with the fish, took a picture. Uh, the wagon was uh, about a quarter size or less than a standard wagon. So the cutout figure uh, known to cameraman appeared as a photographic statuette. Uh, in brackets, that's a photo mounted on a rigid base, such as cardboard, plywood, cut with appropriate tools, such as a, a mat knife or jigsaw was mentioned. Uh, reportedly made from an advertising. However, there's a source that says the man in the picture was so-and-so, and it's possible that the photographer posed him and took his photograph rather than using an advertising figure. So what's important is 
a copy of another photo of the same man and fish taken from a different angle in which the man is posed exactly the same as he's seen in the other photo would appear to corroborate the use of photographic statuette in staging the scene. Well, that's, a, that's pretty good. Um, Patrick pointed out, you, Patrick says you can see here a Conrad negative uh, of the building showing the exaggeration out of it. Can you, can you actually bring that up, uh, Patrick? Can you do that? Because I think Jason and you, when you went to the, the museum and Morgan, I'd be curious too, I've never seen an actual uh, put together exaggeration where there's layers of negatives. I have seen at the at the um, at the Finney Museum the production negatives. So the negative that was made from from the composite, they have those there that were used to produce the cards. But you also, if you notice, Jason, that he's he's made he would make three or four different versions where he would move the text around or yes. change the number on a couple of them. So I have to think he kept the elements together. But I have never seen an actual like multi-layered negative. And I, I just sort of wonder, I always wonder what happened to them. They were, when they moved the building, when Rentals moved from that building to, to next door, how many boxes got thrown in the trash? I can only, I just have nightmares about what, what ended up at the landfill. And I'm, I, I'm just so excited. I'm so happy for you, Jason. I'm, I'm really like pleased that um, you've taken an interest because I think Frank Conard is one of the most exciting and his brothers, by the way, who are also photographers um, are one of the most exciting group of photographers in American history. Of course, I'm a little, of course, I'm, I'm biased here. Um, but uh, he is a, a very exciting photographer. Certainly Did Conard have two work. older brothers? Is that correct? That Conard came kids? from, a se I think they had seven kids. Oh, and there was two brothers who were also photographers. Yeah. One uh, was in um, La Crosse, and then one was in Larnard. But they, they didn't have the longevity that um, that Frank did. They were, yeah. they were out was of the Was he the youngest country. of the three? You know, I'd have to go back and look at the ages. He was younger than his two other brothers that were photographers. He, yeah, he was sort of the baby of the family, but he wasn't the youngest of the family. I know that. Okay, so again, I, Jason, I am very jealous of you getting to spend time in the Finney County Museum because I love it there. And I was driving back and forth for months to just look at everything I could get my hands on. And I saw this commercial photo that he had probably taken probably in the 20s, after he had opened, he was probably doing commercial work, probably in the late teens or early 20s of this, of the Palace Hotel. And I said, boy, that corner sure does look familiar. <laughs> and so I went back and just literally matched it up. So he was taking stuff from 20 years earlier or something and just hmm. slapping that stuff on there, which I thought was just a thrill when I first saw it. Um, and, uh, cause I think, you know, after a while, Jason, I think you're going to find like Morgan and, and Dennis and me, it's, you get more excited about the details. So it's like, you know, this card has four different versions where he's changed the title and shifted things a little bit. And so you start yeah. to get really excited about the little tiny differences. Um, yeah, but that was really, that was a really fun discovery. So he just probably had a huge library of stuff. And was just pulling from whatever you know, whatever and uh, whatever he had. The negatives of of uh, Connor were left at the studio when he sold it, and the guy that uh, bought it from him, uh, he eventually donated them to the uh, Finney County Historical Society. When I went to see him, he had Connor's negatives, all of his negatives he took out at the uh, at the tower in Colorado. And I said, why didn't the Garden City Historical Society take those for the Finney County? He said, they didn't want them because that was Colorado, not Kansas. <laughs> in my optic, as far as I was, I was concerned. And so they're all there in Garden City. I would like to say that all of the ones that show up on the advertising cards, we found copies of those. So when we found those, we were looking carefully to see if there was something on the advertising that we'd never seen, unfortunately, uh, that uh, 
that was uh, not the, not the case. Thanks. Great, Dennis. Yeah, just to follow up on the checklist, we've kicked that around a couple of times. Uh, those of you that go to a, a postcard show that Jim Taylor sponsors, uh, where he sets up, he picked up a few of the checklists for Frank Pop Connard uh, at the York Postcard Show in uh, last November. And I also, I checked my inventory. I've got six three-hole punched copies and two spiral bound copies. Um, I guess it's time for me to finally put those on eBay. I think uh, Morgan's brother had a couple. I don't know that those are still available or if they've been sold. But uh, the checklist, I think, is a good reference. Uh, we, we go through the dust card, dust uh, bowl era cards. We talk about the grasshoppers, the jackrabbits. It's got a nice biography in there. And uh, Morgan didn't get into, into it, but his uh, favorite seems to be all of the commercial uh, various businesses and organizations that uh, partnered with uh, Connor to put their name on his exaggeration postcards and a few of the dust cards so that there's a, a reference in there to give you an idea of how broadly from Texas to Nebraska to Washington State I think so just a little promo uh, if you email Hal or or Alan they'll let you get in touch with me um, just just an item um, three hole punch or I think 19 plus about $6 for the U S postal service and the, the two spiral bound or 25, 24 99. So how that's my say sense. That Dennis is the one that did the one on dad Martin. So the two uh, major okay. checklists uh, were both done by Dennis over a period of time. And I asked him, I told him I had several opportunities to do number three. I didn't get a positive answer up from him. He said it took 10 years to get the last one done. So we all got <laughs> to get on Dennis to do number three. <laughs> well, I think uh, uh, Phil McDaniels is working on a new Connor uh, list too with Dennis. So lots, lots going on. And uh, we appreciate all of you. This is pretty terrific. Any other comments for our speaker? No. There's one more chat. Let's see what's come up. Um, uh, actually, just says thank you, Jason, um, and others for the, all the information. Okay. No, I greatly appreciate. It. I appreciate the invitation, and you know, I I hope with an antique show, and for uh, several years, I've shared with all the vendors we have a supper on Friday night before the show, that it's essentially just a kind of a big family reunion. And just today, I look at all of you crazy postcard addicts, and it's like, we're all related somehow. So this is a <laughs> genetic disorder that we all have. So I, I kind of feel like I've, I've found all my family here. So that's, that's right. Yeah. A great group of people. And really, uh, Jason, I hope you can come to the Wichita show sometime, some uh, October. It's the third weekend always. All right. Or has been. Come this know. year, Jason. Pardon? Come this year, Jason. Oh, <laughs> yeah. We'd love to have you. Thank everybody for coming today. We really appreciate it. And April's Fools, and uh, have a good rest of the day. Thank you. <laughs>